Hello, welcome to GH Coaching. Today I'm going to talk about the things you need to take with you on an ultra race or run. The first thing to say is if you're doing a race, there will be rules and regulations about things that you have to have with you. So regardless of whether you think you need it or not, you must take those things. Have a good look at the rules of any race that you're entered and make sure you've got a, um, a good working knowledge of the list of things that you need to have with you, that you've got a bag that will take them all and that you've got those things. It pays to do that in advance so you can get the quality of equipment that you want and that you like. Um, but definitely what you don't want to happen is to turn up on race day, not be able to race because you haven't got everything that they've asked, or worse still that you get halfway through or to the end of the race and they disqualify you for not having the kit that they've required of you. If there isn't any particular regulations, the first thing to think about is where you're racing, um, whether you're going to be cold, warm or both. Um, the reason why it's good to think about this is because if it's not stipulated that you take certain warm equipment and you know that you're not going to get particularly cold, well there's no point carrying something that's just going to be extra weight. So if you're going to be climbing particularly high or it's later on in the year for anyone in the northern hemisphere, um, then you're going to need to think about keeping warm if the weather is bad or if the weather changes as you climb. Most races in Britain require as a minimum that you have all over body cover which is waterproof and with taped seams. So it doesn't have to be really heavy duty but you know I will come on to that later. Here's, um, it's quite an old jacket as you can see it's um, um, some of the seams are, are not great I need to replace it but that's a taped seam that just makes it extra waterproof. This is quite a nice jacket because it's also got a hood um, and the hood um, has a drawstring uh, so it doesn't flap off every time it's windy. I would advise that you try lots of different jackets if you haven't got one that you like and use regularly um, and buy the best that you can afford really. Um, Pacamac do some ones that are okay, I've used those before. They don't scrunch down particularly small, but they do have tape seams and they do have a hood um, with a drawstring. Um, equally with the trousers, these trousers aren't so expensive, but you can buy trousers similar to the jacket that I've just showed you. Um, but um, they do have tape seams and they are windproof. Um, so while I wouldn't necessarily choose to remove those if it got really cold, or particularly if I um, fell or had to stop for any reason, they would make a big difference to keeping me warm. Um, in addition to a jacket, um, certainly for most uh, fell running association type events, they also expect you to have hat and gloves. Um, so, the hat that you choose is also going to depend on the weather that you're going to face. You might want a warm hat, this is just a, a, a woolen, it's actually a hat for skiing I think. Um, these take up quite a lot of room, so there are te other technical hats that are better, that are skull cap type things uh, that you put on and they scrunch into your hand, they fit really nicely into a, a rucksack and don't take up too much room. Uh, but some kind of warm hat is definitely some, something you're going to want to have if, you, if you're going up high or it's going to be cold and it makes a massive difference to keeping your temperature warm. Um, choose one that covers your ears as well. A good all-rounder, um, but uh, not necessarily classified a hat, so check the rules, is a buff um, because it works both to protect your head from the sun and keep you fairly warm if you use it as a hat because it's a double layer as a hat. Um, so buffs are great, um, they don't take up too much room, you can stuff them in your rucksack or just wrap it around your wrist um, and it works as a sweatband as well. If it's going to be really hot you might want to consider some kind of a sun hat, um, but this has got a sweatband in it, it's got a peak, it's obviously going to protect my head from the sun, but it's also got a little bit of mesh so it's not um, going to keep me too hot while I'm running. In terms of gloves, um, again, it's thinking about what's going to happen on your run. You might just want an emergency pair of fairly lightweight gloves um, like these, just to have in your rucksack just to put on if it gets particularly cold. Um, if you're going on a longer adventure or something where you're going to be really cold, you might want to think of something more heavy duty. Um, 
Another nice to have um, is some um, sleep uh, arm warmers. Um, so I like to wear these quite often on longer runs, um, particularly if I'm starting early, it could be quite cool in the morning, but then by, depending on where you are, nine or 10 o'clock, the heat could get up and I don't need anything on my arms anymore. I can just roll these down or easily pull them off without too much trouble. A lot of races um, also stipulate that you have a spare thermal top, so, Anything like this is quite handy to have. Um, they're fairly lightweight, easily put into a rucksack. They don't take up too much room. Um, you're gonna need to put it in something waterproof if you're expecting a lot of rain. The last thing you want is your spare top to be wet. Um, or you might want to go for something a little bit more heavy duty. Um, this is a buffalo top. It's a really, really good top. It's actually my boyfriend's, but um, I've stolen it off him. I can vouch for it that it keeps you really warm. So even if it's not something that you want to take with you, it might be something again that you want at certain stops to put on so that when you're stopped, you don't get too cold. Or as I've done in the past at the end of a race, just to make sure that uh, you don't get too cold in between stopping and getting changed and showered. There are some things like this that pack up a lot smaller, these um, down jackets or thick down jackets. You're gonna need something to put all this in. And again, um, having a think and a try out of different types of rucksacks is, um, is gonna be time well spent, I would say. A vest like this might not carry everything you need, particularly if you're gonna be out for a long time without any support crew. Um, so you might need something a bit more heavy duty like this. I would look for something with a good um, pocket, a good main sort of pocket with plenty of room to put all your stuff in, but with lots of dividers as well. So you can put the smaller items in there and know where they are. Um, this also handily fits a bladder inside it so you can carry your water on your back, which is quite a good way to carry it and has side pockets. I always go for something with side pockets because I like to keep my food in there so I can easily get at it. The easier it is to access my food, the more likely it is I'm gonna do that and the last thing I wanna do is stop taking food because I can't be bothered to stop and take it out of my rucksack. Um, so again, have a look around, have a try of different things, get something that fits your back comfortably and doesn't wobble around too much. Once you've got your clothing sorted, you're then gonna to need to think about what you're gonna eat and drink. Um, so these soft flasks are quite good. Um, they fit nicely and usually come with a vest like this. They fit in the front, so if that's a, a system that you like, they work quite well. They're 500 mils each, so you're carrying a litre there. Um, and if you know that that's enough for between different stops, that's fine. I usually just take the top off and have a refill them up at different aid stations as I need to. Um, another option that you can choose is a bladder, as I mentioned before. Um, these fit nicely on your back, they're relatively comfortable. Um, you can, if it's really, really hot, put cold stuff in this, which could help keep you quite cool if it's next to your back. I would definitely advise um, on long stuff to um, have some good quality hydration products um, to, to drink while you're on your travels. Um, it makes a massive difference to your performance and being dehydrated is definitely not what you want. And for longer stuff, it's good to have something with carbohydrates and energy in as well, because it's just another easier way to get some energy in as you run. You're also gonna to need to eat food. Um, so having bars and things with you as you're going along is great. Um, I like usually a mixture of um, very sweet things and something with a bit of salt in. You're gonna need, for anything really over 90 minutes, you're gonna need 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrate per hour. Um, so obviously you might be getting some from your energy drink, but having bars that um, you know how many carbohydrates you have is um, a good idea. Um, try and test them in training, don't try anything new on race day. Um, some real food for longer events is also good. It's just about trying and testing for yourself. You're gonna to need to know where you're going. A lot of ultra races are well flagged, but that doesn't mean that you won't get lost. So having a map of where you're running is a pretty good idea because once you're off course, you are not gonna know where you are. 
Uh, so a paper map, map like this is great. They are quite bulky and overall probably better than a phone where the battery might run out. If you've got a map, you're probably going to need a compass as well. Um, so obviously again, you can have a compass on your phone, but um, if your battery runs out, you're not going to have a compass. So having a physical good quality compass that you can get your bearings on um, is always a must. It's also a good idea to know how to use it. Having some kind of map reading skills and an ability to get your bearings is important. For a really long event, especially if you're unsupported um, and you want your phone and your ability to communicate, having a battery and something to charge your phone with might be an idea, but it is extra weight. So think carefully about whether or not that's something you really, really need. You've got your map, but if it's pitch black out there, uh, you're not gonna be able to see much. So most um, long, long events actually ask you to have some kind of head torch. This is just a, a relatively cheap head torch uh, made by Petzl, but it's all right. Um, basically, the more lumens you have in your head torch, the brighter it's going to be and the more you're going to be able to see. So having something like this just for emergencies is fine, but I would definitely go for something a bit higher quality um, for your actual race. Um, but check things like battery life and the number of lumens and just try different ones. Uh, in terms of further looking after yourself uh, while you're out and about on the hills, um, some races will stipulate you have to have some kind of first aid kit. It's a good idea to have your own little first aid kit of things you think you might need. Um, I usually take some painkillers, not for in case I'm injured, but just because I'm prone to migraine. Uh, don't take painkillers if you're injured. If there's pain there when you're running, you need to stop. Um, but some sticking plasters, things like that. Um, also some sanitary products for women um, if you need them, or just so you don't get taken by surprise. Um, other things that um, are good to have is an emergency blanket. They take up next to no room in your bag. Um, they're really light and actually it could really save the day if you fall and hurt yourself on a hill. Other nice things to have um, would be something for a developing blister. I like Compede, I think that works really well. That could be something that you leave with your support crew or it could be something that you have in your first aid kit. We've talked about a sun hat, but um, sun cream is also a good idea to have uh, with you. Um, SPF 30 is usually a good idea. Um, other things that are nice to have are sunglasses. Um, so um, if you're somebody who gets bothered by the sun, um, or if you're going to be running in, in snow, where you're going to get some snow glare, sunglasses are a good thing to have with you. Uh, as I say, these are really a fashion item, but they do work really well. They stay on my head when I'm moving about. Uh, they've got a nice rubber bit here, and they don't seem to um, steam up. Try a few out and, um, and see which one you like best. What can be nice to have is some dry clothes. So if you know that you've got people supporting you, have them with some dry kit. It's probably not gonna take you long to get changed, but it might make a massive difference to how comfortable you feel. As a minimum, if you don't wanna have a full change, some dry socks can be really nice. And again, it might be that um, thinking ahead, you want a spare pair of worn-in shoes, um, running shoes with your support crew, just in case something happens to your shoes. So my advice to you would be, read the rules of any race that you're gonna enter. And in addition to that, have a long think yourself, well in advance of the race, of what you absolutely need to have, and then some nice to haves. Um, get a rucksack that's gonna fit those things in, um, and then run with those things in a fair few times so that you get to know how it feels. In particular, with things like water, it's, it's quite heavy. Um, so having enough but not too much is important and being used to running with it is also important. Um, and don't change anything on race day. Do everything that's tried and tested um, and you'll be away. Whatever race you're doing, whatever race you're preparing for, I wish you good luck. If you liked this video and you want to um, see more videos like this, then subscribe to this channel um, and you won't miss any videos, especially if you hit that bell button. Thanks for listening. Happy running, happy racing.